Miriam Hopkins first captured moviegoers attention in daring pre-code films, such as Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde in 1931, The Story of Temple Drake in 1933, and Ernst Lubitsch's Trouble in Paradise in 1932. Though she enjoyed popular and critical acclaim in her long career, receiving an Academy Award nomination for Becky Sharp in 1935 and a Golden Globe nomination for The Heiress in 1949, she is most often remembered for being one of the most difficult actresses of Hollywood's golden age. Whether she was fighting with studio moguls over her roles or feuding with her avowed arch-rival Betty Davis, her reputation for temperamental behavior is legendary. And today, we'll be looking at the life and film of a Hollywood rebel, Miriam Hopkins. But before we get into it, don't forget to hit the like button, share with your friends, and subscribe for more interesting videos. In the first comprehensive biography of this colorful performer, Alan R. Ellenberger illuminates Hopkins' fascinating life and legacy. Her freewheeling film career was exceptional in studio-era Hollywood, and she managed to establish herself as a top star at Paramount, RKO, Goldwyn, and Warner Brothers. Over the course of five decades, Hopkins appeared in 36 films, 40 stage plays, and countless radio programs. Later, she emerged as a pioneer of TV drama. Ellenberger also explores Hopkins' private life, including her relationships with such intellectuals as Theodore Dreiser, Dorothy Parker, Gertrude Stein, and Tennessee Williams. Although she was never blacklisted for her suspected communist leanings, her association with these freethinkers and her involvement with certain political organizations led the FBI to keep a file on her for nearly 40 years. This skillful biography treats readers to the intriguing stories and controversies surrounding Hopkins and her career, but also looks beyond her Hollywood persona to explore the star as an uncompromising artist. The result is an entertaining portrait of a brilliant yet underappreciated performer. Early Life Miriam Hopkins was born on the 18th of October 1902 in Savannah, Georgia. Her parents were Ellen Cutter and Homer Hopkins. She also had a sister named Ruby. When Hopkins was seven, she lived briefly in Mexico. Her parents divorced while Hopkins was just a teenager, and she moved in with her mother and sister to New York. Hopkins was a student at Goddard College in Vermont before going to Syracuse University. She had little to no contact with her father, but left his name on official documents. After becoming estranged from her father when she applied for a passport in 1922 to undertake a theatrical tour of South America, she listed his address as unknown. Career at 20, Hopkins became a chorus girl in New York City and acted regularly on the stage throughout the 1920s, including the 1926 stage adaptation of Theodore Dreiser's An American Tragedy. In 1930, she starred on Broadway in the play Ritzy by Sidney Toller. She starred on Broadway in the lead of Jezebel, a 1933 play by Owen Davis. When it was adapted as a 1938 film of the same name, Hopkins was bitterly disappointed that Betty Davis was chosen for the role she had played on stage. This began a feud between them, publicized by the studios. Paramount Picture Contract The same year, Hopkins signed with Paramount Pictures and made her official film debut in Fast and Loose. Her first great success was in the 1931 horror drama film Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde where she portrayed Ivy Pearson, a prostitute who becomes entangled with Jekyll and Hyde. She received rave reviews, including one from Mordaunt Hall of the New York Times, saying she portrayed Ivy splendidly. Rise to stardom. Her career ascended swiftly thereafter. In 1932, she made her breakthrough in Ernst Lubitsch's Trouble in Paradise, where she proved her charm and wit as a beautiful and jealous pickpocket. During the pre-code Hollywood of the early 1930s, she appeared in The Smiling Lieutenant, The Story of Temple Drake, and Design for Living, all of which were box office successes and critically acclaimed. Design for Living ranked as one of the top 10 highest grossing films of 1933. She got the role of Ellie Andrews first. Hopkins was one of the first actresses approached to play the role of Ellie Andrews in the 1934 It Happened One Night. 
she rejected the part, and Claudette Colbert was cast instead. Hopkins auditioned for the role of Scarlett O'Hara in Gone with the Wind and was the only candidate to be a native Georgian, but the part went to British actor Vivian Lee. Both Colbert and Lay won Oscars for their performances. Feud and Controversies Hopkins had well-publicized fights with her arch-enemy Betty Davis. Hopkins and Davis co-starred in two films, The Old Maid in 1939 and Old Acquaintance in 1943. In this period of time, she believed that Davis was having an affair with her husband, Antoli Litvak. Davis resented her jealousy and said that she had enjoyed shaking Hopkins in a scene in Old Acquaintance after Hopkins' character makes unfounded allegations against Davis's. Press photos featured the two divas in a boxing ring, gloves up, with director Vincent Sherman between them like a referee. In later interviews, Betty described Hopkins as a terribly good actress, but also terribly jealous. After Old Acquaintance, Hopkins did not work in films again until The Heiress in 1949, where she played the lead character's aunt. She married four times. Miriam Hopkins married her first husband, fellow actor Brandon Peters, in 1926. The marriage ended in divorce the following year. A year later, she married screenwriter Austin Parker. The marriage lasted until 1931 when it ended in divorce. Hopkins married for the third time in 1937. Her third marriage was to director Antoli Litvak, and the marriage ended in divorce in 1939. Hopkins' final marriage was to war correspondent Raymond Brock. The marriage also ended in divorce and lasted from 1945 to 1951. In her later life, Hopkins adopted a son, Michael, in 1932. Final Days Hopkins died in New York City from a heart attack nine days before her 70th birthday. She is buried in Oak City Cemetery in Bainbridge, Georgia. Legacy Despite her feuds, Hopkins got two stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, one for film at 1709 Vine Street and one for television at 1716 Vine Street. Apart from the fact that time tends to dim memories, early Paramount Films, the studio that now owns most Paramount classics, and the majority of U.S. film critics and historians seem to believe that American cinema began with Miriam Hopkins' professional legacy that has suffered more than those of other major stars of her era because of her off-screen reputation. To say that Hopkins was considered difficult would be an understatement. In fact, when her name comes up in current publications, not infrequently accompanied by the word bitch, it is almost invariably tied to that of her arch-enemy Betty Davis, with whom Hopkins had well-publicized fights when they co-starred in two Warner Brothers productions during the height of the studio era. And that is it on the empathetic biography that captures the passionate, full-blooded life of celebrated actress Miriam Hopkins, her idiosyncratic and complex life. If you find this video interesting, don't forget to hit the like button, share with your friends, and smash the subscribe button for more interesting videos.